Hi guys, welcome to yet another Laser Talk, and this week's movie is going to be the deluxe widescreen edition of Stephen King's Thinner. This is the story of an upper-class suburban lawyer with questionable morality as he defends crime lords owing them favors and really not caring about it, only having the idea of being obsessed with wealth and food. He is a glutton, severely overweight, obese, his wife's trying to put him on diets, and it starts in the beginning of the movie to try and portray him as a man who has the potential to change, someone who is focusing on the wrong areas of his life, it's affecting his marriage, it's affecting his health, he is not exactly staying true to the standards of truth and justice, he's kind of just in it to for the money, but not in an obsessively greedy way, just he comes across in the beginning as this character who, alright, we see this guy, he has a lot of problems, he's not quite likable, but by the end, he's going to be someone who goes through a tremendous change and learns a lesson. Not really what happens, though. The problem with this movie, overall, is that not only does it present it to where you're supposed to be rooting for this, char this main character that's presented, he actually becomes more of a monster towards the end, and every single character, from the small characters to his, even his wife, to his uh, friend, the town doctor, to even the judge, even the characters who put the curse on this main character, every single person comes across as selfish and petty, and you really don't have anyone to root for, even though you're supposed to feel for certain characters and understand their motivations, everyone just kind of comes across as a jerk who goes overboard with their seeking of vengeance or redemption or self-pity just in this twisted way to where no one really takes a moral stand or a moral high ground. Everyone is just vengeful and out for themselves. So what happens, not to reveal too much, trying to stay a little spoiler free in case you haven't seen this, basically there are a bunch of gypsies in town that are very obviously there's biases against them, trying to kick them out of town, um, can't quite because they go into private property, that type of thing, and it's very in a, a boys club buddy buddy kind of way with the judge and the chief of police and the lawyer and everyone involved. It's very much a upper class white male boys club defend your honor, defend everyone around you. When the attorney and his wife are driving back home from dinner celebrating a big case win, she's trying to give him that final bit of motivation to stick to his diet and lose the weight for not just her, not just for himself, but for their daughter, and she starts to give him roadhead and he gets distracted. And pretty much the moral of the movie comes out as roadhead is dangerous. That's about as far as this thing goes because it just doesn't present the moral arguments that it sets up in a good way it doesn't really resolve anything, doesn't really go into any deep exploration of these human issues. It's just kind of a, alright, this is the next plot device to get you through this tale of revenge that ends up very tragically towards the end and not very fulfilling. So what happens is while he's distracted, he ends up running over an elderly gypsy woman as she's leaving the pharmacy to get her coat and he completely gets off scot-free because of this buddy-buddy system with everyone who is really in control of this, of this small town. And the gypsies are, of course, upset about this and this lack of justice, and so the father of the elderly gypsy woman, this 109-year-old magical, mystical gypsy elder, goes and curses everyone. He strokes the side of the face of the obese attorney and says, thinner as he curses him, and he grows uncontrollably thinner no matter how much he eats, he's losing 10-20 pounds a day sometimes until he's this ghostly gaunt figure, and he seeks first to figure out what is going on, then to try and get them to lift the curse, and then it's a quest for vengeance that really is where the movie takes a turn to where it doesn't resolve anything morally, no one really grows, everyone is just awful in this movie. And that's really what it comes down to. It's an okay movie to watch. It was, it was pretty fun. It wasn't really spooky. It wasn't super humorous. It was just kind of like, alright, has the feel of a typical 90s, maybe made-for-TV kind of horror thing. It's an enjoyable afternoon if you are in the mood for that type of thing. But what's really cool about this disc, not only is it a really good quality copy, but at the end you also have one of the better parts of this movie. There's a feature at the magic of the special effects and makeup, and that's actually some of the better stuff in here. Some of the makeup in some scenes isn't quite right, but overall it does come across as fairly convincing, and that's one 
part of this movie that does a pretty good job, and you appreciate it more by watching this little featurette after the movie goes into greater detail of how they did the multiple stages of the fat suits and the facial makeup, and you appreciate that aspect of the movie more, and I think it gives you a greater appreciation of what was actually good about this movie because there's so much to focus on that's bad and it's so easy to get stuck in that and not really consider the parts that were successful. And what is even better about this release, and I really love having this and I've watched it twice now, once watching the whole movie the way through because I'd never seen it before, watched the movie the whole way through, watched the special features, made me appreciate it a little bit more, found it somewhat enjoyable, and then I watched it again just a couple days later because on the other audio track is actually a commentary throughout the whole thing. So included on one disc you have the entire movie, uh, about a 20 minute featurette at the end talking about the special effects, plus a commentary track through the entire movie that again gives you a little bit of a deeper look and I love commentaries not just because they tell you a little bit more about the movie, they really give you more of an insight into how it was created and what they were going for, what was successful, what wasn't, what the original vision was, and maybe you missed a couple things along the way and it can give you this new vision, this new appreciation of it, and a little bit more of a context as far as just watching a movie in a void, listening to commentary of people that are involved in it can give you a more intimate picture, a more detailed approach to that movie, and it becomes a little bit of a deeper experience because you, again then, I tend to watch a movie a third time then, after you know listening to commentary and seeing it once before to have that commentary in those in those details that I've uncovered in my mind and go through that second viewing of just the movie without any sort of commentary to get a, a little bit of a deeper look and to look a little more closely now that I know the plot and characters and see what really did work what didn't what could have worked what the actual you know, vision was versus what was put on film and it's kind of an interesting thing so Overall, it's just an okay movie, and if you like this kind of stuff, um, it is a decent watch. Again, it has a lot of bad points and leaves you very feeling unfulfilled, and just it's an unsuccessful picture story-wise, but it is fairly entertaining, and it's not something that I would say is comes across as boring, just kind of lackluster. And this release in particular I love just because of all the extra features that are slapped in there it makes it a much better whole experience than just the movie itself.